Is it the shoes dissecting the NBA's 350% incident spike in Achilles tendon ruptures for the season? Let's break this down. In part one, we discussed how all seven Achilles tendon injuries occurred on a false step, how the angle between tibia and foot during this step is a key contributor, and the data. I'm bringing you a real human cadaver Achilles tendon to help illustrate the single most likely contributor to these injuries. If you looked at a freshly torn Achilles tendon under the microscope, you find 97% of them show pre existing degeneration, meaning they were already weakened before the actual moment of complete rupture. It's highly likely that all seven Achilles ruptures this season involved overuse related degeneration, especially in the case of Jason Tatum and Tyrese Halliburton. Tatum coming off a deep playoff run in the championship joined Howie weeks later to play in the Summer Olympics, followed by deep playoff runs. This level of volume is highly predictive of some form of Achilles tendonitis. Halliburton's calf strain likely stemmed from this load and playing through it in the finals made an Achilles rupture far more likely. In Dame's case, he had the DVT related absence during which he couldn't play contact sports. On return, he faced a sudden spike in intensity and minutes, an abrupt load increase that likely contributed to his rupture. Aside from Halley, two other pacers tore their Achilles, a first in NBA history, likely tied to Indiana's league-leading pace, practicing at this pace, and then more in-game possessions equals more sprinting, cutting, eccentric load, compounding stress within the one team. Modern spacing adds to this, forcing defenders into hard closeouts. Offensively, it invites sudden stops, jab steps, and euro steps, movements that trigger false steps and constrain the calf Achilles chain. Is it the shoes? Money's gotta be the shoes! Biomechanical evidence suggests shoe design can influence tendon loading. Moderate evidence shows that shoes with a greater than 8 millimeter heel to toe drop and good cushioning reduce Achilles stress by limiting dorsiflexion. In contrast, low heel to toe drop shoes that favor forefoot dominant play are often stiff, flat, or plated. For example, Jason Tatum's first Jordan shoe can enhance speed and explosive push off, but increase plantar flexion demand and Achilles loading. Emerging moderate to low quality evidence suggests midsole stiffness and toe spring angle may affect Achilles loading during push-off. Stiffer midsoles, especially carbon fiber plates, reduce push-off effort and improve efficiency via a diving board effect, but they also increase Achilles force output in less time, theoretically raising tendon stress. Some doctors prefer plastic shanks with mild flex for this reason. Higher toe spring angles on shoes may reduce tendon work, possibly leading to deconditioning and compensatory Achilles strain over time, especially in high volume athletes. NBA Achilles rupture data shows no consistent link to shoe brand, model, or collar height. There's no strong evidence that high tops prevent Achilles injuries compared to low tops, meaning shoe height isn't clearly protective or harmful to tendon integrity. It's worth examining whether any athletes were on chronic or high-dose anti-inflammatories like corticosteroids or NSAIDs or fluoroquinolone antibiotics, all of which are known to weaken tendon and ligament strength. And lastly, no evidence supports that wearing the number zero can increase that risk.